For children, especially in this generation, everything has become so competitive, and the focus has primarily been on this pattern of manufacturing products rather than raising children. For some people, this has worked out, but we have to acknowledge the deep inequalities of this privilege, and we have to acknowledge the effects this philosophy has had on the mental health of this generation. Dancing, singing, art, sports, things like that have been recorded throughout history as a part of human nature. We've seen it stay as a constant and correlate with laughter and joy, the most instinctive desires, and a part of society that is so natural and so human and so unaffected, yet the Western world has created almost this capitalist patent on these activities, keeping people away from that experience that's so naturally desired, because people are afraid they can't make it, or they can't afford it, or they're burning out. As a society, we've put so much stress on making it like that is the end-all be-all for our lives. The lives that are so short and so unknown, why are we cutting ourselves off from what we do know for sure? happiness and joy. For me, my source of creativity and decompression has been my dance studio, which cannot be said for a lot of extracurricular facilities. 15 years in retrospect isn't a long period of time, but it's the mere length of my entire life and probably a lot of yours. Knowing how I was and how I am and how I will be has changed and will continue to change over time in a multitude of ways, to the point where I can't even recognize 10-year-old Sheila to 15-year-old Sheila, but what I can recognize are the consistencies. That can be a lot of different things for people, but for me, that's dance. I will forever be grateful for my access to my dance education and the things that my dance studio has taught me. Responsibility, empathy, creativity, and perseverance are just scraping the surface of what I've learned and how I've evolved. The teachers that have been with me since I was three years old have helped shape me to the person I am today and are definitely credited for the person I will become. And I might not pursue dance as my career, or maybe I'll try, but my goals will change as I do. They've always opened up opportunities for their dancers, but will never push someone towards something they don't want or hold someone back from something they do. Dancing is something I love to do because of the security and trust I have with the adults at my studio. That will always have my best interests at heart, and the community that has supported me through all areas of my life will always feel like a second home. Trust me, I know you're probably thinking that this is some sappy, cliche, personal narrative. Why dance has changed my life and why coming to my studio will change yours too. It's not. You could have never moved your body in your entire life, and this message will still resonate. I'm afraid that these extracurriculars, the things that are taking over most children's lives, are going down a path focused on profit. I'm sure everyone is familiar with conventions. They range from a multitude of focuses and are essentially a masterclasses and workshops from professionals. In the dance world, conventions mean a totally different thing. Children from ages 3 to 19 are competing against one another to get noticed by the biggest names in the dance world, all with ties to Hollywood, world of dance, and a multitude of different artists. Imagine a Hilton something or other with tons of kids decked out in makeup and hair, moms yelling at them to stretch and make a good impression, dads lugging around the piles of bags filled to the brim with costumes and shoes, whispering voices of excitement after realizing the 2020 junior best dancer is your assistant, and nervous anticipation when the studio that won last year enters the building. Class begins and no one knows where they will stand or who will notice them, unless your studio or parents have staked out that spot for you, or unless you're friends with the convention staff. The floor of the chain hotel ballroom can change your life. Where you stand and where you move to is something you will carry, and how the people who determine your success will see you, literally and figuratively. You must be this tall to ride, but instead you must be from this studio, wearing this leotard brand, friends with this person to come onto the stage, to stand in the front, to walk out of the ballroom spirits lifted more so than they were before you walked in. I've seen kids walk in excited and walk out in tears once they realize they weren't as good as they felt they were, once they realize they haven't met the standards, the explicit ones and the ones implied. Questions racing through their head. Should I start homeschooling? Is it what I'm wearing? Why can't I even make my way to the front? Having thoughts of insecurity that no child should have to experience, especially from an activity that so much of their time is dedicated to. Admittingly, I don't know how to fix this issue. It's definitely a morality thing, but the dance world, among many other areas of extracurricular, is moving faster and faster down this path. All I can say for sure is what you put into this world echoes. So don't be afraid to make beautiful things, even if they don't yield what society has painted as success. If you know what feeds your soul, or you want to try something, I seriously encourage you to just do it. Don't take yourself too seriously because life is precious and it's confusing and there's so much we don't know. So don't waste your time worrying about making the right choices that will quote unquote pave your path to success. Success is so subjective and someone else's definition of it doesn't have to be yours. No one is limited to the confines we're presented with. Put yourself out there, find your community and become someone that you're proud of so you can look back on this life with fulfillment, whatever that means to you.